This week on Maker Update, highlights of the best projects from our WD Labs Raspberry Pi contest, Minecraft in your pocket, coding for medieval glory, fish feeders, alien finders, and a new maker show to put in your queue. It is Wednesday, December 14th. I'm Donald Bell and welcome to another episode of Maker Update. It has been a lot of work this week and also a lot of fun uh, sorting through all of the projects that you guys have submitted for the contest, all the Raspberry Pi projects. It's been inspiring to see what you guys are working on, all the, all the different, just the breadth of different projects you guys are thinking about. Uh, it really gets me excited. And so thank you to everyone who participated. Let's just jump right into the projects, all right? And if Pi projects aren't your thing, I get it. I spent this last week welding together a go-kart frame and didn't even touch a Raspberry Pi. So I know it's not for everybody, but I, I promise you this list is not your usual list of Raspberry Pi projects. Uh, I really spent a lot of time culling together something interesting for everyone. So hang in there. And also I've got some other non-Raspberry Pi related stuff towards the end. So it's worth sticking around. Let's start with a few that didn't make the cut, but I wanted to include them nonetheless because I thought they were cool, interesting projects. And to let you know also that all of the projects you're gonna hear about today, there's gonna be links in the show notes that can take you to more information about all of them. John Kearney turned me on to the Pie Hole project, which basically blocks digital advertising on your home network before it even gets to your computer. It's a bit devious, but it's a cool thing to know about. I didn't know about it. Ryan Campbell let me know about the Pi compatible SETI at home software for helping to analyze radio telescope data in the search for extraterrestrial life. I used to run this all the time back in college, and I think it's cool that there's a Pi version now. From Zach Carson, I learned about the Light Show Pi Google Group, a group dedicated to finding ways to use the Pi for animating lights, particularly relevant for this time of year. Joe Villavicencio introduced me to the FabScan project, which uses a Raspberry Pi to power a low-cost DIY 3D scanner. Marie Godin was one of the many people who wanted to build a smart mirror, but the project that she referenced was this small frameless design that I hadn't seen before. It's found on innate.cc and it costs only around $80 in parts, which is pretty cheap for a magic mirror. These all sound like great projects, right? And I'm sorry you guys didn't win anything, but hopefully this shout out here will mean something to you. All right. And now for the four runners up in no particular order. These people will each be receiving a Pi Drive kit from WD Labs, which will give their Pi projects more storage plus multiple project spaces for juggling up to five distinct projects from the same drive. Abdul Rahman Yusuf Abdallah pitched me a great project that uses a Pi, a radiation sensor, and a GPS board for logging areas of radioactivity and sharing that data with the community. He cited cities like Khartoum in Sudan, where there is residential development right now in areas that might have unsafe levels of radiation. So how do you say no to a project like that, right? Plus the, the Pi Drive's extra storage should be a real benefit for data logging. Thomas from Powell River in British Columbia works in a makerspace where they are working on a way to operate a 30 foot tall marionette using motorized winches. He wants to use the Pi to drive the motor controllers as well as create a web accessible system to allow the crowd to remotely control the marionette. How awesome is that? Nick from New Zealand wants to create a Pi powered fish feeder with his young daughter the feeder would have a web accessible front end that keeps track of feeding times and allows you to manually feed the fish with just a click from anywhere in the world. It looks like a fun project and one I hadn't seen before. And Clay Cooper emailed me with the hope of creating this Raspberry Pi VoIP intercom, allowing his kids to easily talk with cousins and grandparents far away without having to borrow his phone. I love the way this one looks and that is built off of an open source software called Mumble, originally designed for gamers to insult each other. So those are the four runners up and I really hope they enjoy their Pi drives. Hearing about these projects really made my week. So thank you guys for sending them in. And now for our grand prize winner as decided by me and the winner of a complete compute center system from WD Labs, including a Raspberry Pi 3. The winner is Caleb J. Caleb J says he's a geologist and I believe him because his email was way too long and technical to be fake. He wants to use the Raspberry Pi to help teach seismology at his university and deploy a network of home-brewed Pi-based seismographs around the area to help verify and triangulate readings. Caleb turned me on to the Raspberry Shake project, which aside from having an awesome name, endows the Pi with a geophone that can detect and record earthquakes. So thank you, Caleb, for showing me a cool Raspberry Pi project that I had never seen before. 
I hope the WD Labs Compute Center serves you well and that the extra storage of the hard drive works for logging all that seismic data. And if it doesn't, you've got four other project spaces you can use on that drive for running a secret game emulator or other side projects on your downtime. A huge thanks to our sponsor WD Labs for making this contest possible. I really think they're making some useful and unique kits and products. You can find them at wdlabs.wd.com. Now it's time for a few tools and tips. This week I learned that Science Magazine has a new spin-off called Science Robotics. This is an online only magazine that falls more on the academic side, but it's currently free to sign up for, and they have a fascinating write-up on the making of the high-jumping Salto robot from UC Berkeley. I also noticed that Adafruit is now stocking a wider assortment of panel mount extension cables, including mini USB and mini jack cables. These are great for project enclosures where you want to extend a port that might be on a board out to the exterior of the box that you have it in, but be able to have it nicely mounted. I'm thinking of picking up a few of these for my Billy Bass project so I can mount the connections onto the plaque. Also, just yesterday, the makers of the Chip Computer Project Board announced that they now have a working version of Minecraft that you can play on their portable pocket chip system. I've been eyeing this thing up for a while now, but I finally got one and I'm looking forward to sharing my thoughts over on makerprojectlab.com. Also, I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I totally missed last week's Hour of Code, Week of Code push. It just went past me in a blur. Fortunately, I did catch on the Adafruit blog that there's this new site called codecombat.com that makes learning Pi compatible Python code super fun, and it's free. I'm only on level two right now, but I'm hooked. I'm also hooked on the new show White Rabbit Project on Netflix, which reunites the original Mythbusters lab team, Carrie Byron, Tori Bellici, and Grant Imahara. The show is total maker nerd candy, and I highly recommend it. Finally, even though maker fairs are done for the year, there is still one major maker show and tell worth knowing about, and it's happening this weekend on Sunday and Monday, the 18th and 19th. NYU's Tisch School of the Arts is having their ITP Winter Showcase. It's open to the public, and I'll leave a link in the show notes for more info. I always look forward to the projects that come out of the show, and chances are I'll be telling you about a few of my favorites next week. But that is it for this week's show. Again, I want to thank everyone who participated in the Raspberry Pi contest. I thought that was a lot of fun, and I hope it's something we get to do again soon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.